emissivity and the solar constant. I like this. Has science gone too far? <laughs> That's science really small because it's far. All right, we've got this emissivity. This is a, an idea here that not all objects actually behave as well as black bodies. You know, they're not uh, perfect absorbers or emitters of radiation. So instead, we use this term emissivity to describe things that are not black bodies. And the way it's done in general, at least, the emissivity, we're going to write this lowercase e right here. We're going to say it's the power emitted by the object. Divide that by the power emitted by a black body you know, of the same size and temperature. So we're basically saying like what the power is divided by what the power of a black body would be. And if you remember uh, then from your equations for black bodies at least, do you remember what the power of a black body is? Well, we wrote L, it was a luminosity, but we can write it as a power here. It was uh, sigma times a t to the power of four. And now this one right here, uh, power emitted by the object, that'll just be a p. And if you notice then, we can take this, and I just want to show you this, we can just combine the P over A. See those two right here? I'm just going to take those and put them together. I'll say P over A. I'll maybe put like a little, yeah, I'll just keep them separate. For example, I'll just keep them isolated. And all that is going to be uh, times, well, let's see, 1 over, it's going to be um, sigma A T to the fourth. Uh, not the A, sorry, sigma T to the fourth. So really what's going on then is we've got this piece right here, this little p over a. And so that's why we can actually then rewrite this whole thing right here because we have an equation then for the emissivity and this is in your data booklet. So it goes like this, just like we have here power over area. So we're going to say it's the power radiated per unit area. And that whole thing is divided by sigma t to the fourth. Okay, and what does everything mean? Don't forget, we have sigma, which is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, so that's 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. We've got temperature of the black body, so that's, remember, because we're dividing it by a black body uh, uh, power, so that contains the surface temperature of that black body. Now, a nice little exam tip, I think, for you is just knowing, okay, what about emissivity? So if something is a perfect black body, that must mean that the power radiated must be you know, equal to exactly the same as what it would be uh, from the black body. So that means you'd be dividing the same number by itself, so that would be a 1. So that's a perfect black body, of course. And then, of course, if it acts the opposite, so it's something that completely reflects, for example, well, emissivity then will be 0. So we have something called the solar constant, and we call that S. And the definition, at least, is uh, this is the intensity of the solar radiation that reaches Earth. It's really important to know this right here you find on your data booklet, which is good. That's actually on page 3. Maybe I'll write that down. So there we go. So it's on page 3. So you don't have to memorize it. There it is. It's basically 1,360 watts per meter squared. So what do we define it as? Well, S, okay, that's this power per meter squared. That's what an intensity is, right? It's in watts per meter squared, just like uh, apparent brightness. So it's a power per meter squared that reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere. So what do I mean by that? Well, the sun is, is sending out its light, its radiation, in all directions. But what is actually reaching Earth? Well, there's going to be a piece, of course, that reaches Earth. So let's say it's this one right here, and I could write it, you know, as this will be the solar constant. It's what reaches at least the Earth's atmosphere. Now it's important to consider though that that's not what reaches the surface. Okay, so what we just had before, that's just what reached the atmosphere. What actually gets to the surface? Well, it's a little bit weird, but the sun's energy, this you know solar constant right here, uh, well, it only hits half of the surface. It's like it passes through this like 2D, you know, like a little circle right here. So I thought, ooh, that means, well, let's write down, this is the area of a circle is just pi r squared. But of course we can say here it's gonna spread out over the sphere. Now what's the surface area of a sphere? That would be an area of, uh, or remember what the surface area of a sphere is, it's 4 pi r squared. Well that means that what actually reaches the surface then will be some fraction. It'll be s that came in, and then we're going to divide uh, this one right here, this fraction of you know, pi r squared, divided by 4 pi r squared. So we'll have that, so we'll have pi r squared, that's from the, top, the left part. Divide that by 4 pi r squared. And of course, what happens then, you have the pi r squareds cancel out, and you end up with just s over 4. 
So that means that the really important part then is that only s over 4 actually arrives at the surface of Earth. This is actually really, really important. So if you need to know, yes, although the solar constant is that number, you know, 1,360 watts per meter squared, what actually reaches the surface of the Earth is only one-fourth of that. And keep in mind here, we did ignore the effects of the atmosphere. So for example, um, we'll be having another video that I'm making uh, that goes over albedo, which does take into account at least what the atmosphere actually does. I put this awesome t-shirt here. I'm so bright my father called me sun. Haha, <laughs> get it.